I'm Mel Stewart, and this is Swim Swim Podcast. Joining me today is Coleman Hodges, Swim Swim Head of Production and the man on deck at all your swimming meets. And today we have a very special guest, one of the most famous coaches on earth, perhaps one of the most controversial coaches in history, Shane Tussup. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you for the invite. It's great to be here. Thanks for that. Thanks for doing this. It's so yeah, right course. at the out, right at the outset. I want to. I want to. I'm going to be very vulnerable, and I'm just going to say there. There's so many layers and narratives to your story that, it's, uh, <laughs> that, I, that I can. In preparing for this, I got. I got overwhelmed. I got a little bit overwhelmed. Yeah, just a few layers, huh? <laughs> there's, there's layers. There's many layers, and and some stuff I'm going to share is going to make some people probably mad at me. And <laughs> this is here's the thing. This is not. This is the swim swim podcast. If, if Braden Keith were here, he's the head of editorial, it'd be a different conversation, but this is a podcast, this is a conversation, and we've wanted Shane on for a while, and I just want to say I appreciate you coming on. So this, yeah, this, is, what, this is what I'll say. I'll say this. Um, the, from, from your rise in the sport to present day, there's been ups and downs, but you and I have always been in communication. We've had a personal relationship. Yeah. I had a personal relationship with one of the biggest athletes on earth that you collaborated with and were creative mm-hmm. with and had success with Absolutely. that relationship too. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about you, but, but our personal relationship has, has, has been from something with shared philosophy, which is it's, and I'm an owner of a, of a media company. I'm a co-founder yeah. here. And it's like, we started talking and we share philosophy on the future of the sport and Absolutely. We have, so we have a very core belief and I have found you to be as creative and interesting and, and entrepreneurial as anyone I've talked to on earth about swimming and <laughs> Thanks, you did it so young, but it came, it came through, it came through a very unusual circumstance. And <laughs> also with that came the persona and, uh, <laughs> let's uh, anyway, so I, I'm going to start that there. That's, that's my vulnerable <laughs> Disclosure Thank you. I everybody. appreciate it. That was very nice of you. <laughs> and your beard's rocking, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> so, Brian, the, the, the point of the conversation is that, you know, recently you, there was a Eurosport feature. It was a very good feature. And the feature was, um, the feature was, hey, bear in the hatchet. And, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disclose something to you that, that you're probably not aware of. If you are, I'll be surprised. But part of the reason why I've always stood outside of this and watched this and I've always – you know, I don't have a lot to say. I've never been, you, you've got a lot of haters and I've never like dove into the comments and said or shared my opinion. And here's the reason why. When I was an athlete and I went to, when I, on my run up to 92 and winning, um, I was really an asshole to my competitors. Probably not the best teammate. This is not your experience. This is my experience. But I was, I was, uh, I, I, I had an edge and my edge was so freaking sharp that when I came back to swimming and start and launch the business, I basically, I had to go to a lot of people and say, Hey, you know what? I think you understand what I was doing, but I probably could have done it differently. I, I, I own it all. Um, I wouldn't change anything. It's what I did, but it's a, but I, I know that it, it, it hurt our relationship. And it's like, so I talked to a lot of people and I basically did that. And it, and the Eurosport feature, felt like you cracked the door on that is that is that a fair assessment yeah absolutely it um you know i was talking to to the journalist and, and it came up as a topic and i you know the idea of bearing the hatchet and it was something i reached out and i said look this is something i think i want to do and i kind of want to but i want to do it the right way um and you know it it it, it was never something i hadn't thought about like i kind of you know like you were saying you you described it perfectly you, you kind of, you're leading up to something and you're going through this process and you kind of know what you're doing and you're aware of it, but you know what you're working towards. You know where you're trying to get. So at the same time, you, you kind of know you're, it's not the best way or it's causing some problems or it's going to cause irritation in the future. But it's really like at the time, it's the best way to move forward. So for me, after everything was kind of said and done, um, I just, you know, I really wanted to go back and I really wanted to start to mend some fences and fix, fix the relationships and really like 
swimming has been such, um, such a blessing for me. It's been such a, a unique sport uh, with so many ups and downs um, and so many layers, like you said. So it's, it's just been something I didn't really want to walk away from. And I really wanted to, you know, honestly, everything I've done and everything I was like really trying hard to push towards was coming from a place of really want to help the sport and give back to the sport because the sport meant so much to me um, at every step of the way, including getting me to USC and, and everything I did internationally and, and worldwide. And, um, there was so many cool opportunities. So I really like always from the day one, I want to try and have an impact on the sport in a positive way and push the sport forward. And it got to a point where I realized I got a lot of cool things done. I was part of a lot of cool things, a lot of success. Um, I think I had an impact to some extent that other people were able to take from the, wherever I stopped and took it a lot further. And it's, I'm really happy about that. It just felt like I kind of exiled myself as well. So I really wanted to try and go back and fix some of that. You leaned in. You, <laughs> just a little. <laughs> you leaned into it. So it, it's, it, it's a, it's, um, so I'm trying to, to so I, I'm watching it from the outside. I see the, the feature come, I see the Eurosport feature, great feature. And I, and I, it, and, and then I watch our report and then our report, I see the comments and I, and I gotta be, I gotta be honest with you. I was like, Oh, wow. This is like, I was sort of bracing for it. Cause I didn't know what to expect. I was, too. <laughs> I was bracing for it, but it, it's a, yeah. it's, it's so interestingly, you know, there, there, there are a lot of folks that are in the, the camp of, of like, you're an asshole and you should never be in swimming. And then there's, there's, there's some folks that's like, no, uh, second chances. And I, and I, and I was surprised that I saw, second chances a lot more and i saw yeah. hey it seems like some people have some context they, they sort of know what's going on but i don't think people know the entire story one thing was clear for me that the people who were saying no out was the the i don't and and it's two things i don't know if it's the sacred cow of and it is a sacred cow it's a very very it's it's something that that we should be we should we should honor and respect and it was the age group kids the uh Christ. The moment on deck and mm -hmm. that like, I, it, but I looked at that and I'm like, that's a bad moment. That's not good. And that's what this, a lot of this feature was about, but it was, uh, I, but I also wonder if people are leaning into that because they're, they don't like the, the history, the previous stuff. And they're like, they just, they hang their hat on this one moment. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it, that was, it's a pretty bad moment. It's, it, it is a sacred situation on, on pool deck with yeah. kids. And, and I don't know how, you know, you, you address it, but it's like, I think that you just started and I think that it's, uh, there's going to be, you're going to have to have some moments with people. You're going to have to figure out how to get to people and say, Hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a very, it's a very tough situation because, um, I mean, like you were saying, there's tons of layers with everything going on here. And, and I think one of the really difficult parts is that not only are there layers, but there's context that really gets lost from, where I'm at over in Hungary and, and what's going on here in Hungary and how the system works and, and one, the business system to the swimming system and, and all the hierarchy and, and stuff going on. And, um, and, and with mine also on top of it, this, the celebrity aspect of, of what I do in this, in the sport, uh, in the country. And, um, and then, you know, how it carries over to the hunger uh, from the Hungarian media with a lot of them actually end up being gossip magazines that will write headlines, very, you know, catchy headlines and then those get picked up by international media or by you guys without necessarily context of who the magazine publisher is and so it ends up with a lot of context gets lost by the time it comes to the actual swimming industry uh, which is very difficult but completely understandable um but yeah it's it's hard because it's it's definitely something i have to work on um i actually had already sat down way uh, you know after it had happened i sat down with the federation right away and tried to um, actually sit down and talk about where we were and what was going on and what was the context of the whole thing. And, um, you know, it, it, it's like all bad situations are all really nightmare situations for me that you start out with the best intentions. And I know, you know, the comments are going to be crazy about how it never can happen. And it's just, it's a bad situation, but, um, it started out with, you know, trying to protect the kids, the, 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 the competitions weren't of, the value which they deserved, the level in which they deserved. It wasn't at anything you've seen from an age group competition in the U.S. Um, they're under poor conditions. And I was trying to show, I wanted to get a point across to my kids that your coach should back you up no matter what. And I think that I was trying to teach them a lesson after a lot of days on the pool deck 
no water, overheated, not, you know, just not in the right mindset and definitely lost my cool and trying to teach them a lesson in a positive way. And the whole thing spires out of control. And with a lot of those things, once they go out of control, they go, you know, they snowball quickly on you. And for anybody listening, I mean, just, you know, I'm your buddy. We have, we, we, we've always been talking that it's a, so if, here's the thing, if you, if you, if you, Anytime you try to, to walk back what happened, people are going to be like, they're going to be mad at you. They are. Yeah, so, you know, you, you can, you can add context and you know, that's fair. You should add context, but it's a, at the end of the day, you got to say, you know what? I wasn't okay. And it's no, never going I, I to happen again. No, I had, I had, I had good intentions. And I think the way I executed was extremely poor. And I think that where it made sense in my head, it was one of those things on paper or on in theory, great on paper. Absolutely not. Never to be experimented with. And um, I think I just completely got lost in what I was trying to do. And, and I really messed up. And it's one of those things you wish you could take back and you wish you could apologize to the whole industry and to the country and, and really uh, make up for in a positive way. And I think that's something I'm going to have to do on a daily basis, you know, with the sport and trying to, to push forward and, and just, I mean, I can only, I can only move forward and try and, be a positive influence in the sport from now on from, from the fan from the fan point of view because I, I watch this you know i'm watching it as a i'm trying to study it um so from the fan point of view you know we, we we've seen your career we've seen your presence in the sport and it's and it's fun it's entertaining but sometimes it would become very very intense and uh i don't know how many if, if we had a billion plus people watching at the olympics but it's like we saw an intensity <laughs> and that, that really turns some people off so yeah. when the situation on the age group level happened, it's just like Sean can't control himself. It's just that's the guy he is, and that and he he's so I, I think that's where a lot of people are just like, yeah, confirms everything that I think about this guy. And that was the unfortunate part of the whole situation is that's not you know those weren't two. I don't feel those are two of the same um, the same situations. You know they were at the Olympics and and Worlds. That was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, a lot of hours. Like I said in an article, I was, I would stay up late at night. I would stay up for nights on end trying to research and study. So a lot of what would go on in the pool deck was just me. Like if you watch when, when the world record happened in 2015, I was crying. There wasn't any other extreme. It was just all of a sudden just stand there crying because I didn't think it would actually happen. Break a world record for me. That's the, the absurd, like coolest thing you can ever do was break a world record more than Olympic goals or anything just the idea that I was able to be part of something like that. And a lot of it was just, you know, owning the moment because you go through so much pain and so much time and effort, even just being a coach and trying to support an athlete, especially a single athlete towards a single specific goal that a lot of the stuff on pool deck, it wasn't me trying to make a scene or take attention. It was just me honestly being overjoyed with what was going on and what was involved in it and really living the moment. And, um, you know, you hold on to those, you hold on to that high, you hold on to that rock star moment, that, that vibe, that, that adrenaline pump that comes with it. And you hold on to that till the next time. So it helps you not only express yourself from all of what you were doing those other hours, all those years and, and, and pushing through, it also helped carry you to the next competition, to the next short course worlds or, or long course worlds. But the, the situation on the pool deck with the age group kids was, just the wrong place, wrong time, you know, overtired, not thinking, and me just making an utter mistake and, and not really being able to apologize about it quick enough and, and not really handling it well. I, I Honestly, I didn't really want to admit I was wrong at the time. I wanted to try to put context to it. I wanted to try and explain it. And I wanted to try and make sure people understood where I was coming from. The people close to me, the kids, the parents all came in and like thanked them or they thanked me. And it was like, I, I, I almost wish people had just said, dude, you were wrong, like straight up. And it would have been a little bit easier um, than getting some mixed results from those close to me or wanting to support me at least. Um, and I, I think I would have been able to apologize sooner about it. Um, but it wasn't, they're not two of the same. One was just me utterly making a massive mistake um, at the worst possible time in front of the worst possible audience. And um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here's, you know, it's, Fans, fans see the fans see the. Uh, I would say that the media coverage during your your some of the biggest moments on the biggest platforms, um, what was captured, and we we see it behind the scenes at Swim Swam. We see it behind the scenes. What we see the most the most intense moments often come across as like uh, hyper masculine, almost violent, 
intensity and we don't see the softer moments and the celebration and the intimacy and uh, the quiet moments. The media does capture the most intense and they, and fans that don't like that see the, they, they do connect it to the same thing that happened with on the age group side. So it's a, I, th I think that at the end of the day, it's, it's like as a coach, people expect you to be a certain way and hold up a certain Absolutely. standard and you got to trade, you got to stay true to that standard. So it, it's, it also sounds like, it sounds like in terms of our commenters and when I'm just watching it, um, a lot of U.S. fans are like, no. A lot of uh, international fans are, are falling on the side of, uh, no, this uh, Coach Tussup has earned his place and he's, uh, he's passionate, but he is a, this is who he is. They, they take you, they take you as a whole human being. And I, and I, th I think that's a fair assessment in terms of how the global market breaks down. And Swim Swim yeah. is an international platform. People don't realize that we report in six languages. We're watching, it's not just a domestic driven business. Our international uh, base is very important, so we pay attention to that. It's, um, so it's my hope as, you, as, as someone who's been talking to you from the, from the very beginning that you, you continue this process and hope, hopefully you have some healing with some people. Sounds like you can do it from the ground up. Sounds like the and people and, on, and the base yeah, leadership, just to take you know, it. I just gotta say this. I just gotta say this. This is where my head spins. Leadership, Hungarian swimming federation. The, the, the leadership there. It's a very complicated history. <laughs> very complicated history. <laughs> go, go. I don't know. If, I don't know if Coleman's like, in, in, like, has dug into this, but it's like it's almost. I don't. I think it's a bureaucracy, and it's very complicated, and uh, and I'm in, in, in. I don't understand it. But I have a feeling a very that long time to explain it, to be honest. <laughs> it, it sounds imagine, like tough to navigate. Imagine learning. That was the thing. Imagine learning that basically I was in college. I went to in 2012. I came over here and I, I was never I didn't have the experience coaching. I didn't work under anyone. I had a few people I could call that I trusted as, as previous coaches of mine. I was never planning on being the swim coach. I was going to do more of the management of the team and, and put the people in places and put experts in the in, where they should be. I didn't see myself as an expert. I didn't have the expert to put there. And suddenly it was, Hey, um, you got to do this <laughs> and you got to do it at a high level. And I had to navigate not only how to coach and how to do the, my job at that level. I also was trying to figure out how to navigate the government, the, the, the systematic bureaucratic system in another language that I don't speak that I mean, very, very few people speak. And it was, it was a nightmare. It was very difficult, a lot of stress. And um, yeah, I mean, it was coming out here was like coming out to the wild west. It was just like, no rules applied, you know, no it, rules I knew applied. And it was really trying to learn the system and who to work with. It sounded like, it seemed like from looking from the outside in that it was a, it was a system where you, you had position and power because uh, because you were moving fast and you had a lot of success. And that bureaucracy, I know what bureaucracies are like in the United States. I know and also, which, which is actually USA Swimming is extraordinarily professional. Um, I think they're really, people, people don't realize, but they're, they're, they're a crown jewel in terms of dealing with situations. People complain, but they really do do a great job. Uh, abroad and some federations, it looks like, it comes down to just power. It looks like the only way to get things to really grease the wheels and move forward on, on your mission or whatever you're trying to achieve, it sounds like you default to a power position and, and you, you, have to, you have to bulldozer. Did you have to bulldozer there? <laughs> yeah, so it was, it's not quite, you know, I, I was learning business in school in the US and when I came here, none of the rules applied. I had to figure everything out as I was going. I mean, that first, I mean, the, the business and, and what I was doing, the success level really took off after more like 2014 when, I mean, we brought home one gold from short course European versus three when there was three world records on the dock and they were like, oh, okay, that's not good enough. And that's when I, you know, that was when it really was an, an eye opening experience um, for me. And um, it was a lot of things leading up to that, but then it was like, okay, I have to really kind of take ownership and take charge of what I'm doing. And, um, I've used a lot of American, you know, I get, a, I get a lot of 
crap over here because I use a lot of American capitalist mentality and, and, and kind of hustle. Um, so I kind of, I mix and match and I try to really adapt and, and I move fast to break things, but then, you know, it's kind of like, you have to keep moving. You have to keep shuffling your feet and kind of keep moving quickly through everything. And you have to know the right people. You have to get good contacts. You have to be involved with the right people. And it's been about, you know, who, you know, and who you can connect to and really, it's 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 a difficult it's it's a lot of power game it's it's kind of like a risk game not monopoly um and you're trying to accumulate the pieces and, and put yourself in the right position and i was lucky with the with social media my understanding and my desire for social media and their positioning where they were in developing social media really gave me a leg up on how to use the power and how to use my voice and the voices of the athletes and, and the brand and what we were trying to accomplish quickly and effectively um so that obviously got picked up by the magazines which gave us a certain reputation you know obviously with me and as well in the in the gossip magazines and and the sports magazines so it definitely you know kind of came back to me at the end uh, a little bit rough and i still deal with it on a daily basis here but um you know it was definitely something i found that i could rely where i didn't know who to trust particularly i could rely on a lot of social media and a lot of um self production of media and that's where the company had a whole media company after a while it was just from the desire to protect and, and have my own voice and, and secure my own voice and that voice was power because we could interact with the public and, and make sure they knew what we were trying to do as something positive well the 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 this two things in the united states uh, it was very clear that um most coaches want you to um evolve and and build up to having the prominence with a with a with a star athlete, and you have one of the biggest stars in the world, and uh, so I think there was some jealousy. You know, it was clear that we were feeling some jealousy about that in terms of like who is this guy and, and why does he get to do us and how is he being so successful? And I, the feeling I the impression I got was that you really pissed off the the Hungarian establishment. <laughs> um, it was yeah. it was it was it was, in, it, was it was uh, intensified over there. And we would, uh, and, and, and we did, we would re report from Hungarian news. And it's so, it's a, and I think that it was a, so that we had this cycle that was driving it. Um, so here, there's a question in this and, and it's a, and it's a, it's a fair question. It's a, uh, when you have a huge star, all attention's on that huge star. And uh, did you ever feel that, that, that your, what you did as a, as a collaborator and a coach wasn't fully respected uh, acknowledged. Um, did, did you feel that? Do you feel it now? Yeah. I mean, in, in regards to what you said at the beginning of the question, it, I, you know, there is that in our sport it's very strong. You come up as a, as a coach through the ranks and then eventually you can take over a mega star, develop a mega star. Um, and I got a unique opportunity and it was very disappointing for me because especially here here it's very ageist it's very you know you earn your position you your age earns you a spot your experience earns you a spot whether it's necessarily completely right or completely wrong it's it's about you know the experience and, and the, the process and i came in as a like the youngest coach they've had by a long shot um and a very different system i i didn't work in the Hungarian system at all. I had a very different philosophy from most sports, more swimming programs as more of an athletic program and more as a performance specialist. And um, with the competitions and stuff, it really kind of rubbed everyone the wrong way really quickly. So I came in with no friends whatsoever, uh, um, which kind of, you know, as a young kid, I, I dropped out of graduate school. So I was still really young and I had this giant chip on my shoulder because of that. If I don't think I would have had the chip if people had really just kind of like, Hey, we're rooting for you. Like, we hope you're right. Like, that's cool. What are you working on or how are you doing? And it was a collaboration, but I was basically shunned. I mean, it's still the same situation now, but back in the day, none of the Hungarian coaches would speak to me. Um, so I would go and I would actually hang out with the athletes and I have better relationships now with the athletes because I'd go there and they're all much, much older than I am. And we don't, you know, they don't speak a lot of English per se, but they also wouldn't bother to speak with me. So I would kind of do my own thing. I know that started rubbing the international media the wrong way, especially as I got a lot of success and was doing very well. It started to make the international coaches kind of annoyed. Um, they were nicer to me in person, but I kind of, I've heard through the grapevine. I've seen emails and this and that where 
definitely rubbed a lot of people the wrong way with that success. And it definitely, um, it definitely rubbed, it made the chip on my shoulder and made me more driven as a, cause I was still a competitor at heart. I, it made me want to prove that I, I had a decent idea. And as I got more success with that, it definitely made me want to show that I can have an impact on the sport and that my idea might not be wrong. And, and as that was going, it was very difficult because, you know, 2016 Olympics was looming and I knew exactly what the scenario was. I'm, I, I understood the environment was I can prove all this stuff with, with lots of competitions and a style and an approach towards, um, towards business, focusing on the business and, um, and making money at the swim meets and, and swimming lots of races. But if there's no Olympic gold, it's all wrong. And it was four years of wrong and four years of a mistake. And I would be basically a laughing stock and like, you know, the biggest flop in the sport as a coach. So there was a lot of like stress about that. And the chip on my shoulder was like, I want to prove I can do this. It was that Rocky Balboa moment, like just get up and pound through it and push through it. So it was really like, it felt like just a, like, it feels like the longest period of my life and the shortest period of my life at the same time of just like constant stress and strain and push and probably why you saw me like so excited every time we did something right or there was some success it was just a relief and just emotions flooding out of me it's a it was a um whether you're a, a shane tessa fan or not you you cannot deny this fact uh you did transform the way people think about swimming and uh in your philosophy it's like hey professional basketball they, they play a lot of games they play at a high level and if we want our sports to matter, we have to do that too. And your, your theory was that it was possible. And if she does it, excuse me, if, if you were the person you collaborated with does it, then more people will do it. And that proved to be correct. And that, that is a, that, that's a moment that people, you know, 20 years from now, generation from now, they, they have to go, you know what? It worked. And this is a moment, it's a pivotal moment in history. And, you know, we, you have to be honest, you own that. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think it's just, for me, it's an honor that if that ever is the case, that it actually ends up being some pivotal moment in the sport, something that was added to the sport for me, that's just a, that's, you know, something I'm, I'm so proud of that I I'm like, it almost brings me to tears now, like in all honesty, because it's just like, that's all I ever really wanted to do was to have some impact on the sport. I didn't get it as a swimmer. Um, when I got the opportunity as a coach and performance person, that's all I really wanted to do was have some impact. And I, I spent a lot of nights trying to figure out how I was wrong and trying to find – everyone kept saying in the comments that I'm wrong or the articles that I'm wrong. And I, I talked to you a lot through texts and calls. Like, I was always trying to figure out I must be wrong. Even the night – I didn't sleep the night before the 400 I am because in real it was just I'm wrong. Tomorrow is the end of the whole thing. It's done. This isn't going to happen. It's going to fall apart. And – you know, if it if honestly, I don't know. I mean, I'm glad a lot. I've seen it. I've seen a lot of people take things up and run with them. I, I'm really happy to see that. It means a lot to me. Trust me. I, I celebrate more than anyone else, their success. And I think it's awesome to see. Um, and I just, it means so much to me that I have able to have some kind of even just small, my, uh, minuscule impact on the sport. And, and that's just everything I've ever wanted. So I'm, I'm hoping that you have enough compassion to forgive yourself for anything that you're like, okay, that wasn't right. Because I think if you get to that place and you may already be there, then I think that when you go to people and say, you know, these things I didn't, I didn't do that right. And I'm going to, I'm going to do it better next time. And I'm going to earn your trust and respect. Um, I do think that you, you know, you can always, that's a path forward always. And it's a, I, th I think, I think you have that And the, and the Eurosport feature was a, was a nice start. And it's, uh, I do think that the, I, I do think that what you did was, was interesting and valuable and, uh, and I, and I want to see it more. I, I know because I have professional swimmers who call me and say, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing it like, you know, coach Tessa did. And these aren't, these aren't, these aren't small names. These are, these are, these are big name people. And, uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting situation. Um, anyway, I, yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's just a, it's a it's uh I, I hope I hope this is a, I hope we're at a place right now where you can continue to move forward and that this is an ongoing process. But uh, there's a whole lot of topics we're covering here. We're down to seven minutes, and we we can pull apart each of these pro each of these topics if you if you would come back on. Sure. Yeah, I mean, 
hopefully this is something I can continue to do. I mean, for me, it's just, I wanted to get back into the sport. I wanted to get back in there. I know I've, I've heard a lot of people and I can't apologize enough for, for what I've done, especially, um, you know, to fellow coaches and to fellow to athletes that might have pissed uh, upset and to especially more than anything, the volunteers, because a lot of our sport doesn't run without those volunteers. And there's a lot of times where they were just the wrong, honestly, the wrong place, the wrong time. And I just wish I could have brought a bottle of water or a sports drink or coffee for them later. I just I was so many things going on. I just that wasn't what I was thinking at the time. And um, the list goes on. It's just, you know, it'd be great to be part of the sport in a way that I could really make a hopefully make some bigger impact or have some 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 influence on. I mean, I love that instead of you getting those calls or calling me asking me for opinion. Um, I love that people would feel that they can actually reach out to me. Um, I mean, the, the athletes here in Hungary, they know. I mean, there's soccer players. I work with some soccer players. I'm working with a bunch of different sports now. And, and you know, our tennis stars, our, our uh, Bellator stars, they, they all know just I'm a phone call away for anything. Um, I wish that it's just weird for me that the swimmers don't feel that way. Uh, and it really, really kind of, it's, a, it's something in the back of my head that really bothers me that the swimmers don't feel like they can reach out and it's not okay to reach out. And I hope they realize they can. And, and I'm happy to help in any way I can. Shane, they're intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> they're intimidated. Serious. They're intimidated. It, it's a, it, it is, it's, you've got a big personality, but they're, they're intimidated and that's a true statement. And, yeah. uh, and also, uh, it, it, it feels like it's a, you're going to have to start that dialogue with people and, and you're going to show up and do it. Uh, look, we, we can come back and we can talk about other topics that are, that are interesting. And there's certainly, there, there's this, like I said, there's many layers. We're down to five and a half minutes. I want Coleman to come into the conversation. I was hoping sure. that we could get into your future a little bit. Sounds and, good. Uh, and talk about that. And, Cause you know, where you're at now and where you plan to go, uh, in the near future. With the Olympics, we got the Olympics coming up. I mean, and and like you mentioned, you know, you're working with soccer players now. You're working with other athletes aside from swimmers. Um, you know, yeah. Moving forward, you're getting back into swimming, but 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 what's it going to look like? How's it going to look different f- from from your previous involvement in in just swimming? Um, I mean. Honest, my honest opinion of myself, I know people have an opinion on my coaching style. Um, but for me, it's always been trying to adapt myself and my approach and how I am and handle myself towards what the athlete needs and wants. Um, so for what's really cool is like right now with Liliana, it's, it's really about um, she has her own reputation and history in Hungary and, and, and being a wild child and, and what she's done. But for me, it really targeted me. It was like, well, she needs a partner she needs to be part of the process. She needs to be an open partner and, and treated as a co like co-founder of what we're working on. And, and she's blossomed under that and it's felt really good that we're really building her up in a professional manner and, and really teaching her how to handle herself with professionalism and, and, and kind of building out the business and how she interacts with sponsors. Um, the football has been an amazing experience to work uh, alongside Red Bull Salzburg uh, um, and, and Dominic Swalski it's just been such a cool experience because it's someone at that level who is trying to make a transfer and who's trying to do stuff. It's, it's so much fun to kind of use my, I've always seen myself as a performance expert. So kind of using what I kind of know and applying it in a new challenging format, that's not swimming. Um, it really brought back actually a lot for me to swimming. So I, you know, Lilu got the benefit of a lot of different thought process and a lot of different things um, that I was trying to carry over from football back into swimming that I had carried you know, I'm mixing and matching and it's really making me think through a lot more things and be a lot more sharper on how things work and being able to reach out to someone in Bellator and understand power, but not weight. And, and to interact with these athletes is really cool. And then the golf was, you know, for me personally, being the athlete again and working on the golf swing and, and figuring out like, how would I coach myself right now? Like, and then that really kind of got me back into how it worked and understanding rotational power and, and what needs to happen in the athlete. So it made me better at being able to talk to the athlete and, and kind of communicate with them and, and really see from their perspective and dial into exactly what it is we want them to accomplish with manipulating the water and the starts and, and how they have to accomplish things. We're down to, we're down to two minutes. And I, I just want to, uh, uh, this might just be like, no, we're not going that this is not a topic that, that really matters right now, but I've just had a curiosity. It's international swimming league. It happened last year. You know, it was successful last year. We enjoyed covering it. Um, is, is there any sort of 
collaboration or talk or any sort of future and with ISL because it's a it's it seems like this was um it seems like ISL was 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 the right fit for you. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think some of the foundational concepts kind of came from more of what I was trying to accomplish, and they it seemed like it kind of spurred and, and grew you know, faster. I know the conversations are out there already, but when I started showing how we could do things and how we could play like basketball or perform like basketball or tennis, it really grew, and a lot of the athletes really jumped on it, which was awesome. So, I mean, I would love to be involved in the future, but I'd love to be involved in whatever manner I could, even at the lowest level, honestly. I'll work my way up. I'll, I'll earn my spot. But, um, you know, just being involved in that would be great because I'd love to be involved in helping the sport grow to something that I think it could be. I think swimming can step away from the Olympics if it wants to. It, it needs to have its own standing. It needs to not be in this awkward, almost abusive relationship with the Olympics that it can't survive without. Swimming is too good to not do that. It has too much to, to stand for. It, it, we got to get there. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.